looking at a crypto-crystalline quartz, this thing's been sitting in the earth for millions of years. I never would have guessed that's what was coming out of that box. What is going on here? Okay, we have a familiar face back here, Christopher. Glad to have you. Thank you, and I think we may have an unfamiliar face around here somewhere too. Oh, anyway, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> People ask sometimes, do you have any pieces that you, you know, wish you hadn't sold? This is one that I actually found at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show some years ago, and I saw it and I was like, oh, I know who would love that. So I called her up, showed her a picture of it, and said, you know, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna bring it in, you can come by and look at it, feel under no obligation whatsoever to purchase this. I would love to, for this to have wound up in the JTB collection, and if not there, I had money burning a hole in my pocket to just keep it myself. I love, love, love this piece. I'm very, very happy where it wound up because <laughs> it is a treasured part of someone's collection. And fortunately, they brought it back to us so we can share it with you. That is quite the intro. So I am sure you guys are very antsy to see what's in the box. I have never seen this specimen in person. Ooh. So let's see. Oh my goodness, look at that. Sometimes people ask me what quality of specimens that I collect, and I just have to say, this particular specimen is good enough for me. <laughs> what you're looking at here is a face agate from Brazil, and it's a very, very recognizable <laughs> face. The cookie monster. Yes, it just doesn't get any better than that. And the color, the Amazing. color is even correct. <laughs> you're going to pull these apart. Okay. Yes, there you go. Right. Oh my there. goodness. That should be good. Oh. And there we go. <laughs> Look at that. Sometime back, there was a little tiny cookie monster that went viral. It's about this big. He's actually a friend of mine. And one of the first things I did after I saw that video was like, uh -huh. let me shoot you a picture. And that's one of the magnificent things. This is just absolutely huge. The only reason I wound up finding this piece that day was I was at the Tucson show. We were sharing cars and I didn't have a car. And so I wound up walking and I was walking by a gallery and I just happened to duck in there and Boom. So we know of at least two cookie monsters that exist. I'm presuming there are more. Yeah. Is there a particular locality or like um, how do we get these and are, can you find them in certain places? Typically the most common place, the most likely place to find face agates is usually Brazil. There are a couple of different localities there. I've also found them in Laguna agates, condor agates. Usually the European ones are much less likely to do to show faces and they tend to be more expensive because of the rarity because it's more common to find them in Brazilian agates those are usually the most affordable faces that you'll see I've never seen any that were this size and that detail and just that just perfect of a face it's perfect sometimes it's a stretch to see the face like some of the Mexican ones though I've seen penguins I've seen astronauts and all sorts of just really really crazy shapes it's a lot of fun if you go to a show just look at every single agate that they have if you find an agate booth and just see if something pops out at you now, they're very collectible they're very fun and they're so just so fun. happy they're so <laughs> cute that is so cute I mean can you imagine waking up, looking at that every day. One of the reasons that you see agates in some places more commonly than others is, is you get different banding. So we're looking at a crypto-crystalline quartz. You have some actual macro-crystalline quartz in the middle right where there. you can see there, but then you've got crypto-crystalline quartz, chalcedony. Since we have bands, we're looking at agate, and it's just the patterning of the agates. We happen to see the cookie monster just right there. The outer edge of this particular geode is still intact all the way around the back end. And it's also just incredibly fortunate that they happen to slice it right there. This piece is only about an inch and a half thick, but the face is nowhere near as perfect, just an inch and a half back on this side. The back cookie hasn't had a cookie in a while. <laughs> this is what he looks like when he doesn't get the cookies. Oh, he's angry. And he's not happy. <laughs> They just cut it at the perfect angle and the perfect depth to really see it in its best light. 
It's amazing. And the thing is, is this thing's been sitting in the earth for millions of years before the Cookie Monster was ever conceived. Yes. OG Cookie original. Monster. Yes. <laughs> this is one that was a favorite. I've brought a new favorite in too, and this is one that I haven't shown anybody yet. I wanted to unveil it here first. Oh, like, thank you. Here's a box. Oh. There's a clip. Okay. If the base fits, like is this like an if the glove fits type of situation? I don't know. If the base fits. Should I, should I open it open or do you away. want me to try no, to guess? No, go ahead. Okay, so this is the custom stand. Is this, hold on, let me hold it. If the blank fits, wear it. If the shoes fit. There you go. <laughs> Nice and slow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Look, I'm gonna let you touch that. So one of the things you're looking for when you're looking for a really fine mineral specimen, aside from color, crystal coverage, condition, and things like that, one of the most it factors with a fine mineral specimen is the shape or the overall Look aesthetics. At that. This one we call Mercury's foot. Why Mercury? Do you see the wings on the ankles? Oh my god! That, that is so yeah. cute. That is amazing. Okay, so that's grape calcedony. Yeah, from Indonesia. You often get these colors from the bluish to the purple. We didn't even trim this thing. This is how it came in, just like this. And we looked at it and we all saw Mercury's foot. Never would have guessed that's what was coming out of that box. So when did you acquire this? This one came in in a large lot of the grape amethyst. And when they come in, they go over to our warehouse for uh, cleaning and preparation. We go through and we're really really just looking for the ones that jump out. You're not even like picking each one up and looking at it. You're just glancing over it and you're looking for that piece that says over here. And this one just leapt out. We usually don't mount our pieces until there's actually someone who's buying them because somebody might want to see it this way, they yeah. might want to see it that way, but there's really one real way yeah. to mount this piece. And so we just had to have that made immediately. This was done literally right before I got on the road and I couldn't wait to show it to you. It is too cool. We talk a lot on this channel about in the gemology industry that you're always learning, you're always seeing something new. And this is a great example that you just never know what you're gonna find. Oh no, absolutely not. I have to say the wings are my favorite part. Right? I think that is so cool. That's what made and it. What is going on there? You still have a botryoidal form, but it's just been flattened here. So okay. it's likely there might have been a crevice or something that was constraining the growth there to get that more flattened growth area. Got it. They call them grape amethyst, but you know, of course the key is amethyst there. So you've got iron present, which with a little bit of radiation is the cocktail that you need to have amethyst. But then you have some other little trace elements here giving the different colors. One of the things that you're really looking for in a great aesthetic piece like this is that just nice little attractive color zoning there. It's nice to see the variation in color. So is it for sale? It is. I still owe you money, so we'll have to wait on that one. I think this would be a very expensive specimen. Um, it's actually not that expensive. In uh, this case, uh, the material is actually quite plentiful. We buy these directly from the source. When we do that, we get a price, and so we don't really mark them up. Uh, as much because if you buy it right, you can sell it right. This piece definitely gets a huge bump because of the unique aesthetics of right. the piece, but the material itself isn't overly expensive, so it's uh, very affordable. As you know, we usually take a closer look on this channel, but for one, these are so big that you know you these don't really have to go look <laughs> that closely in them. I think Cookie's actually taking the closer look in this <laughs> yes. case. Yes, but why don't you guys take a closer look at both of them? This has to be the funniest way I've ever talked to you before. <laughs> but this has been an amazing episode. Truly one of a kind pieces, super fun. You've outdone yourself. It's been a pleasure getting to show this for the first time and getting to visit with an old friend. And a lot of mineral dealers are like that. It's a real pleasure for us to see a piece that we've found a home for. It literally is like visiting with an old friend. We really love these pieces. Oh, well, thanks for being here. 
You all don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on amazing episodes like this. See you next time.